Hello, and welcome to quarterfinals three of AGT time. Cody Patterson here along with... Along with Jay Bach, ready to uh, count down these 11 acts, pontificate about the next 11 acts, and uh, into the semis as we uh, start to see a light at the end of the AGT tunnel. Uh, yeah, so we're in quarterfinals three. We have one more quarterfinals. And then I think Terry said we're one month away from crowning a winner. Only a month. Yes. So I think that means that's quarterfinals four, yep. uh, two semifinals, and then finals. So that would be four weeks. Yeah. Yes. That would make sense. Um, which, geez. These are long seasons for being like a summer show. Like they just go on and on and on. It it does. It seems like auditions, you know, the, the first part auditions and judge cuts, it's all pre-recorded. That's a big chunk of, once we get to the live shows, it seems like it goes really quick. It does, except there are seven weeks of it. You know, like that's, that's not nothing. No, that's not nothing. You're right. That's, um, that's quite a bit, but I think it's way more enjoyable than trudging through those pre-recorded beginning. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes it does feel like a trudge, doesn't it? Yes, especially when we get to auditions three and auditions four, and then a recap, <laughs> and then <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, yeah, that can get uh, that can get a little a little heavy. Uh, we've really enjoyed bringing it to you guys every week, and and uh, you know making making fun of it. We were just talking before we were recording here of you know there's sort of this black hole. It feels like of got talent content. And we uh, are happy to fill it and sort of have this as a, a hobby that we do. Um, but, uh, you know, this is sort of a, a thing that we, we enjoy doing. So, you know, if you are interested in interacting with us, you can reach us on Twitter at AGT Time or uh, hit us on Facebook, AGT Cast, or email agtcast at gmail.com. And if you are so inclined to throw a couple dollars our way to keep the content coming, uh, you can PayPal us, agtcast at gmail.com. Um, but uh, boy, with that, should we start jumping into some of these acts, or is there any other news we should be talking about? Um, yeah, we got a little bit of news. You know, Simon's still out, and we don't know when he's going to return. Uh, we this week we had th uh, just the three judges, no guest judge this no week. No guest judge. No, and Terry seemed to indicate that that's the way it's going to be going forward. Um, so I'm not sure, um, you know, what's happening there. Why they couldn't get any guest judges, or they just decided to go with three. But I'm okay with the three. Um, I, I kind of liked it. Um, how he moved it a little bit. How he went into the middle. And then you had, uh, if you're looking directly at the judges, you had Sophia on the right. If you're, you know, at Terry's perspective, Sophia on the right and Heidi on the left. Uh, so I kind of like this format. What do you think, Jay? Uh, I like it. I like it. Um, I found myself happy or, or pleased that we only were expecting to hear from three of the judges instead of four. Uh, because hearing from... Uh, just three it, it takes a little bit less time or allows them to talk a little bit more uh it gives them an opportunity to not repeat each other quite so much like just functionally three felt better than four it, it did you're right uh just it feels like that's the way it should be we we love having simon there uh that you know all four of them bring a great dynamic but i really like the three judge format yep Yep. Uh, so I would agree with that. It does sound like we are not expected to see Simon for the rest of the season. Uh, we, we could be surprised with something, but um, you know, given that this is sort of how they've laid it out, uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. It does. It, <sighs> what do I want to say? It's, it's hard to say like, Oh, you only had to perform in front of, three judges or, Oh, you got to perform in front of only three judges or whatever, you know, like it doesn't necessarily feel a hundred percent fair, but uh, I, I think they're doing the best they can with what they got. And sometimes that means you have to spitball a little bit and they're, they're doing okay. Yeah. I think, I think they're doing great. Uh, I think AGT's really uh, production has uh, done a great job putting this uh, show together this summer and, 
and I, and, and I'm I'm pleased with the production value of it. Uh, they had they had a uh, a difficult road to to kind of put all of this together, and you know with with the uh, pandemic and with Simon being out, but man, they've they've done it. They've they've pretty much done it this season. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So live from Universal Studios Hollywood, it's America's Got Talent. Uh, and that's something that I uh, also kind of want to discuss, actually, is how live is this? Uh, it's always yeah. said, you know, portions pre-recorded, but it feels more and more like every single act is pre-recorded. And uh, like maybe the judge's responses are live. Uh, maybe so. Uh, I think, uh, I think the, of course the in studio stuff I think is, is live. Um, there, there are some other acts that I feel are live that kind of have that, um, you can tell the difference in production between a live performance and a pre-recorded performance. Just, you, you kind of get that feeling of way the camera moves and way the lighting is, uh, you can, you can kind of tell what may be a pre-recorded and what may be a live. Um, well, we, we may talk about a little bit more with Sheldon Riley, um, or we can talk about it now, but, you know, Sheldon Riley, uh, when he performed, he was in Australia and anytime you've watched the news or weather channel and they've, uh, talked to someone over satellite that's remote, you can, you can kind of tell that there's a, there's a big delay from when the time they ask a question and the other person answers the question. Right. Um, yeah. But, but with Sheldon Riley, it seemed like the response was was fairly quick for being you know six seven eight thousand miles away um where you kind of expect a you know a couple two three second delay between the time the question is asked and, and he responds right right and so uh i guess i didn't uh cue in on that myself but um it, yeah, it, it does make me wonder just what <laughs> they say live from Universal Studios, but yes. how much of this is really live? What is actually going on here? Yeah, and it'd, it'd be interesting, you know, to, to kind of get some input from people that are in the virtual audience of, hey, are you are you watching this at, at 8 p.m. Eastern time? Or are you watching this at, you know, 6 or 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern time? So, you know, if you've, if you've been in the virtual audience, uh, there'd be some interesting questions to ask. Yeah, I'll I'll reach out to my uh, people who might be in the know and, and see <laughs> <laughs> uh, see what I might be able to figure out. Yeah. So. All right. Well, first act of the night then is uh, from Miami, Florida, Dance Town Family. And I knew going into this uh, quarterfinals that Dance Town Family is just going to be something special based on all that we'd seen of them so far. Um, which actually, uh, now that I think of it, was nothing. We had zero introduction to Dance Town Family uh, until their video package. And then their video package was them saying that uh, they all love to dance. And then um, they danced for us. It was, uh, would, would you call this salsa, Cody? I think this would actually be salsa. Uh, and I, you know, I think how we called it conga, Congo, it could be Congo, Congo dancing, but it looked very much like salsa dancing. And it was actually good salsa dancing <laughs> uh you are uh, what i'm going to call the the salsa expert the salsa uh, dancing expert anyhow that that's a reach uh, on that, uh, but. among the two of us well you <laughs> <laughs> you have something to say about bad salsa and <laughs> i uh, all i'm I, you know we've we've hashed this all i'm going to say is <laughs> i just want to see them do salsa that's all okay that's all i'm all saying right. so okay dance town family uh they they do some uh, latin inspired dancing uh, seems like they're like mostly like you know, 16 on down is kind of the uh, the age group. Although, uh, you know, th when they're um, dancing in a group and they've got their face masks on and moving uh, in a very mature way, they, they seem, they look older than teenagers, I guess. Um, but uh, they danced well. I didn't see any real big bobbles. Uh, there was a few times that I thought things were a little bit off. Um, but, uh, you know, it, all in all, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, what are your thoughts on Dance Town Family? I, I, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I really liked their uh, outfits they were wearing. The, the ladies were wearing white and the men were wearing black. Uh, they even had, you know, the, the ladies were wearing white masks and the men were wearing black masks. And I really liked 
Um, I really liked how those complemented each other. Uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, even the, the kids, you could, you could kind of tell that it was just all uniform. They all looked the same. Um, and it, it was very, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it, it was, it was definitely, uh, this, this, unif this team, this team thing that you had, they had going. Um, and, and I liked that they were like on a checkerboard or a chessboard. Um, so they really had this black and white thing that they were theme that they were going with. Uh, and, and <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. Okay, uh, so the uh, costume and set designer get an A. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and they and they were they were they were outdoors, so you had the kind of the sun setting uh, over the I'm guessing maybe the Pacific Ocean or the Gulf because uh, they were in Miami. Uh, so I, well, I guess it would be the the Atlantic. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're right. It would be the Atlantic. That'd be the other the other side. So it was probably the the you know sun setting over the Gulf. Um, so it was a very nice atmosphere being outdoors. And, uh, you know, I think the, the camera crew and the production crew did a pretty good job with it. Yeah. Um, and they, they seem to love putting people on rooftops this season. Is this the third or fourth act we've seen performing on rooftop? I would um, say Max Major was and the, uh, the Shape was and now the Dance Town family. Was there maybe even one more that was rooftop? The Jabberwockies were on rooftops. Yeah. Yes. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, so all the dancers, maybe they like putting the dancers on rooftops. Oh, there's so, something funny about that. Yeah, I mean, were, was it a rooftop or was it kind of a, like a back patio area? Because it seemed like it was, there was one angle where the camera I think was they were way, elevated where, up. Where, yeah, yeah, the camera was way elevated and you can kind of see uh, from above. Um, so maybe they were kind of on a, like a balcony type area. Um but yes, it was it was a very nice atmosphere being outdoors with the chessboard, black and white theme. Uh, the dancing, the dancing's not uh, like some of the greatest dancing we've seen. We've seen some very nice dancing. Okay. Yeah, that's where I was trying to push you towards here. Yes, so, sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, so I'm trying to, get, yeah, so let me get to the dancing. So the dancing wasn't um, like the greatest dancing we've seen, but it was very clean. Uh, they talked, was it last week, week before the or with the, with the shape, the precision, I thought they were very precise. They were very well rehearsed. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't like some big, dramatic, exciting type of dancing. It was very, very precise. I wish they had given me something memorable. You know, I, I love to write down like that memorable move or those memorable moves that they do. There's just nothing. They, they just were a dance troupe. And I, I, cannot imagine that they're going through um they they weren't there, there was no wow factor there they were good right. to great but there was yes. no wow correct yes i will agree with that i i enjoyed it but i didn't think it was enough to go through okay all right sophia said that was perfection i love your footwork the choreography is amazing howie said you were really in the moment a great way to start the show Heidi said, it was so en fuego, on fire. It shows when you have so much passion, nothing can stop you. Um, and then Terry Crews tried to ask a question to Ruby, and we heard feedback, and <laughs> then that was the end of Dance Down Family. That was actually one of the greatest things was getting the feedback. So I'm like, that is so <laughs> conference call. I mean, we, we don't get those a lot with our, with where I work because we've just got really good equipment and headphones and stuff. But yes, being on some sort of conference call maybe with your friends, a zoom call and you get that feedback. I'm like, yep, that's fitting. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So that's dance sounds family. Uh, thank you for your contribution to the season. I'm not expecting to see them move on yeah and you um, had them on your team i correct? i did draft them um which Second was to last yeah it, it was in uh you know maybe there's something there that we don't know yeah yeah um all right second act of the night we've got nolan neal another one off my draft board uh nolan neal grew up in east tennessee uh i think we established you do or do not know him we do we do not know each other uh okay. he says he's from east tennessee but his bios all say he's from nashville which is more central tennessee so i'd kind of like to know that backstory a little bit more you know if he's if he actually grew up in east tennessee i'd like to kind of know where okay all right well uh nolan neal grew up in east tennessee uh his father was an addict uh nolan grew up to become an addict himself uh you know he has been 
up and down and up and down. He is sober now. Um, sings uh, an original song and plays, I guess, uh, a song called Send Me a Butterfly. Um, sort of, uh, it sounds like maybe asking for someone beyond, somebody who's passed, to send this the sign of presence with a butterfly is sort of what I got from from the the message of the song. Uh, he has a, a kind of tenory voice, really reminded me, this song especially of brian adams uh okay. like that that uh kind of that that little bit of scratchy in in the singing you know look into my eyes you know. <laughs> so uh th- that's what i heard in, in nolan neal like that that brian adams style voice um i was optimistic america loves a singer and he's a singer and he's got a good story and you know they they seem to love to tell good stories on america's got talent they tend to get maybe a little bit further some sympathy votes so i'm feeling decent about nolan neal after that performance how are you what are you thinking about nolan neal i i really like <clears throat> excuse me i really like nolan neal i thought he did a, he did a really good job i loved that he did an, an original and it was a is a really good original the the tune sounded very familiar though he says it's an original but for some reason the melody and the tune sounded very familiar and i can't quite put my finger on you know the song that it sounds so very familiar to is it a brian Um, adams song i i don't think so (laughs) i don't think so were you ever in a bar uh, on an open mic night and Nolan Neal was playing? <laughs> that that might have been it. No, it's it's the tune and the melody sound very familiar to a already famous song uh, that's you know <laughs> been around twenty or thirty years, um, but I can't put my finger on it. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it when he's when he's hitting the climax the, of the song and he's he's just you know his voice is just wailing. It's just it's just kind of hitting you. Um, and then, you know, the message that he's giving because of his, his past of, you know, being an addict and his, his, both his parents were addicts. Yeah. Uh, is that right. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very touching. You know, it's, I've said many times part of, uh, you know, I writing an original song, writing a good original song is a talent in itself. And I think it's, it's nice to hear songs that you're familiar with, but when someone can actually put together a good original song, it's always great to have uh, that skill set in your, in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's nice too. I agree. Um, Okay. Heidi said, that was beautiful. Your voice tells a story and I feel the sadness and hope. Sophia said, I felt this was better than last time. Your story is so heartbreaking and uplifting. Uh, Howie said, you are inspirational. At this time, we are all struggling. We're all looking for that butterfly. You give words of hope. Uh, so far, this is my favorite performance tonight. Uh, so out of two, uh, he prefers Nolan Neal over Dance Town Family. I would 100% agree. I would agree with that too, yes. Um, okay, so there you go. That's, uh, that's Nolan Neal. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm optimistic about his chances to go through, I'd say. Uh, yes. Um, not uh, he's not a lock i guess is what i is what i'm feeling i i think um, we had high hopes going into this to almost all the acts this week i think we, we yeah. knew that this was a strong week for acts yeah um and yeah it's certainly some strong competition you know i think yes. that's kind of the luck of the draw on some of these is if you're a uh an act that would go through one week doesn't mean that you would go through against the competition on another week Yes, I, I, w- I would agree. I don't know if it's a luck of the draw. I think production does have a it's lot a, to do with that. I don't think they they draw they don't I don't think they draw lots and to see who <laughs> show they're going on. Uh, no, no casting bones or anything to no, none of that. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, whatever the decisions are that go into it, you know, sometimes it's um, you know maybe luck of the draw isn't the right turn of phrase, but uh, the you know f- good fortune or bad fortune or you know the the the, the essence of what I'm trying to say <laughs> still still remains. <laughs> so, some weeks you would go through against that competition, and other weeks yes. you would not. 
Yes. Yeah. It's it's all uh, about your schedule. Same same thing happens in sports. Yep. Okay. All, about all right. Schedule. Third act of the night. This is one off your draft board, Cody. Uh, we've got Usama Siddiqui. Yes. Uh, our stand-up comedian. Um, in his video package, you know, it's all about him living with uh, with his parents, and uh, we see him interacting with his uh, mom in air quotes, but his mom is him wearing a wig. Um, and then he had a stand-up set that was okay, uh, uncomfortable at parts, and uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was it was not it, it was it was too edgy for me. I will say that. Uh, yeah, um, I I think as when I was live tweeting during the performance, uh, one thing I said was, "Is it too soon for suicide bomber jokes?" uh yeah it might be uh okay, okay. so uh he, he talks about a couple of weeks ago i was at jfk airport and remember usama siddiqui he's uh, muslim uh and looks muslim as well which is important background information for you know to to make <laughs> this joke make sense uh or you know to to help with it right so uh a couple of weeks ago i was at jfk airport he says a friend from years ago screams at him from across the airport Oh my God, it's Osama. I thought you were dead, man. So like, you can certainly imagine the um, uh, <laughs> kind of, of looks that he might get or, or the uh, humor in that situation. Um, and then, you know, talks about how, of course, uh, he's running late at the airport and a brown dude running with a backpack through the airport. It just looks bad. Um, he gets to Miami. We're going to go clubbing. And this is where he suggests that DJs, they can get away with anything because they're dropping cool beats and, you know, he's beatboxing and then he throws in a, like women shouldn't vote and get back in the kitchen. Um, and they can get away with that because they have this beat. And it, this is where it was really starting to fall, fall flat. Um, if you weren't already uncomfortable enough. And then uh, he proceeds to call Heidi a tramp and then he calls her a tramp over a beat and she didn't seem to like that part even uh, uh, any any better than just being called a tramp. Uh, so that was um, that was uncomfortable, and uh, I I didn't like. There was nothing particularly uh, like um, off color, or just the whole thing was just a little off putting to me. I guess. Um, how are you feeling about Usama based on on his performance? So I okay. I just want to say, going into this, I had high expectations and high hopes for uh, Usama. Uh, he's he's one. I think he is the last stand-up comedian that we have on the show. Um, I know we have uh, what's his name next week, Alex Hooper, but yep. I don't really consider him a stand-up comedian. Um, he's yeah, uh, comic. It's insult, insult comic. So, <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, Usama's the last stand-up comedian we have. I had a lot of I had a high hopes for him uh you know even coming out of auditions i thought he was the best stand-up uh comedian on the show um and then and then to come out and he told these jokes and you know i was i was a little cringy with the suicide bomber jokes and then you know, he did the uh the, the dj jokes and you know I've, I've been reading a lot about what people have thought about his his routine um over the last day or so and Jay, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I've been trying to come up with a way to kind of defend this. <laughs> I've been wanting to do, I, I've been wanting to be, be an Usama Sadiq apologist. Okay. And, and you know, I've even all day long, I've been trying to think, you know, what's the way to defend this? Cause he's, uh, he's, he's just imitating what a DJ is doing. He's not actually saying it himself. He's right. just dropping these things in there. He's, he's basically saying that a DJ would say these things just to kind of fit some stuff in between beats or when he's dropping the beat. But I, I can't think of a, of a way to really defend this. Um, it, it, it was edgy. I like edgy. I like right, right there on the edge. And I think it was right there on the edge. Um, but I think it was, it may have actually stepped over it slightly, not a whole lot. Uh, because if you remember back from our, uh, conversation we had with Ryan Neemiller, AGT approves their sets. Right. Uh, so, yeah. so they, you know, AGT looks at their jokes. Okay. What jokes are you going to tell? How are you going to tell them? They go through all this with these comedians and they have to get mm -hmm. it approved. So 
someone in production approved this set that he did um and and felt okay we're going to either hang out to dry or we think it's okay go ahead and do it um so i'm, I'm not and, sure what what happened there yeah and i i don't know either um like I think that there's something to be said for like a good comic really does like walk right up to that line of uncomfortable and like makes you squirm in your seat a little bit. And, you know, this might be a, um, uh, a, a sense where like if he had five or 10 minutes on the stage instead of two minutes where, you know, we can kind of build a rapport with him and he can tell a little bit more stories and we get a little more background and, you know, like, and, and then we're brought into the story of, of him in the, in the airport and his old friend, you know, calling him out. Like, you know, maybe like after we've built a little bit more uh, time with him, like then the jokes really hit, but it's just like kind of, out of left field like oh man osama jokes okay like uh yep okay We're, we can settle into this and then all of a sudden which, it's you know, like, which, which, which even doing osama jokes is a little sketchy because his name is not osama it's, it's usama yeah and i was i was even thinking am i saying it wrong but you know on the stage they have it written out usama so you know his his name is not osama right right so. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, all that to say, like, I, I think a good comedian can walk up to those edges and can, uh, make you squirm in your seat a little bit and can really, um, play with your uncomfortableness and, and you walk away smiling. And, and I think that he, like, he was right there. It was just, a, you know, maybe instead of one toe over the line, he was dangling two or three toes over the line or something yeah. like it's just, just something was a little off about it. So, um, how he said, I know this is really tough in the best case scenario. It's tough. I love your energy and your commitment. Uh, I don't know that these ladies were giving you the response you were expecting. Uh, Heidi then said being called a tramp was, she said my least comfortable part of the whole thing, but I think she that, meant uh, that was oh, a weird oh, statement. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh or at least uncomfortable i think she said i i edited her and said being called a tramp was my least comfortable part of the whole thing okay. and sophia said i was laughing and then i was thinking should i feel guilty that i'm laughing uh you took a risky theme and risky material um so uh, i'm feeling like you know it's an x from heidi a potential x from sophia and howie isn't going to buzz a, a comedian um but yeah, it was it was pretty. Um, it I, I don't think this was his best material, um, or you know, if, if it is his best material, uh, it was not the right setting for it. Uh, yeah, maybe so, but I still got to go back to someone in production approved this. Uh, someone thought it was okay, um, and I'm, I'm not sure, you know, what happened there, or if you know the the that production person was then you know i don't know if something happened to that production person where someone said look you can't go you can't go and uh approve these things you need to <laughs> it's like so yeah agt agt uh, approved it that's all i gotta say where were you reading this uh information that you said you were the comments about this so I usually after the results, I go on Reddit and kind of see what other people are thinking. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's mainly just other fans. That's, that's, um, okay. I don't know if it was Reddit this. or Twitter or some other forum somewhere. Uh, it's a little bit of both. I mean, that's kind of where I get a lot of my other AGT opinions is from Reddit and, and Twitter. And I kind of then, you know, just bring that back okay. here, but I, my opinions are not necessarily their opinions. Um, I'm just trying to get a feel of what other yeah. other fans are saying as well. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. I was just curious. Um, I spend a little time on Reddit and a little time on Twitter and a little time. Well, I guess just Reddit and Twitter is really where I get most of my uh, sort of general feedback from yep. uh, what people are thinking. So, yep. Uh, all right, let's move on. We've got the fourth act of the night. This is Waffle Crew. Waffle stands for We Are Family for Life Entertainment Crew. Uh, it's a dance group from uh, New York. Um, 
they uh, they are using the backlots of the Universal Studios uh, as as beautifully as any group could. Uh, you know, it's like uh, like parkour, right? They're they're yeah. using the set to the absolute fullest. Um, in their very first video package, I think we saw them dancing on a subway or on a train, and then here they got to actually dance on a subway car like as part of their part of their routine uh, as they were sort of moving through the seats the streets of the back lots and through these different city scenes so uh it was pretty cool it was pretty cool um uh one trick that stood out to me that's worth pointing out they were uh, on like a vertical pole in the uh in the sub subway car and uh, one guy was like tucked into a little ball, uh, like holding onto the, the pole. And another guy had uh, an arm over top of him. It was holding with his hand and then his foot posted up against that. And uh, the, the one guy spun clockwise inside and the other guy spun counterclockwise on the outside, uh, like passing uh, under his arm and over his leg. That was pretty cool looking. I liked that trick. Um, these guys are athletic. They're fun to watch. They're very very good they've got smiles for miles uh what'd you think of waffle crew uh, I, I really enjoyed this there's one trick that really stuck out in my mind was uh, a guy was dangling by his feet from bars at the top of the the subway um he, he kind of just stuck his feet up there and was hanging upside down and then he slid along the bar and then pulled his feet out and kind of slung himself forward uh that one really stuck out at me and i really enjoyed that but you're right these guys used all kinds of scenes from the back lot. They they started out in, in a what a New York City neighborhood um, that we've probably yeah. seen in tons and tons of movies, like uh, brown TV shows. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they moved along, and then they performed in front of the joke shop where um, uh, Kelvin Kelvin Duke sang. Um, oh, then, okay, yeah. Yes, and there was even a part where they were walking along. And then up on a marquee for a theater, it said Kelvin Dukes. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was a nice little Easter egg that they put in there, uh, or they didn't. They didn't take down the the marquee for Kelvin Dukes. That was really cool. Uh, they used the subway. They sang in front of the little joke shop where Kelvin Dukes performed. So they 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 reused some things they've used before, or the AGTs used before. But I still thought it was fantastic. They used a ton of different scenery. Uh, these guys moved all around. Uh, great, great great performance yeah yeah i'm i'm feeling good about that these guys are on my uh off my draft board uh so of the four so far i've had uh i've had three uh and you had usama so i'm thinking like i am in, i am made in the shade <laughs> <laughs> with tonight uh standing ovation from all the judges heidi said i felt like an old it, this felt like an old hollywood musical but modern. It was cool how you used the space on the lot. Yes. Uh, Sophia said, you are in your element. Uh, you're the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. Uh, Howie said, Simon is right. You are golden buzzer worthy. You're at the top of your game, not just the moves and the energy, uh, but the passion. Uh, my new favorite act of the night uh, goes to <laughs> Waffle Crew. Yeah. Uh, I also want to give a lot of props to, like the camera guys because they had to they had to move <laughs> with them. They had to be in the right place. The the guy, a couple of them that maybe were inside the subway with them. Man, the the camera crew was doing a fantastic job with with Waffle. Yeah, yeah, they might have uh, their heart rate might have been up too. I, yes. I totally believe that. Um, yeah, these guys are cool. I really really like them, and I'm feeling good about them being on my draft board. Yes. So. Uh, okay next next act of the night another one off my board we've got annie jones <laughs> uh she's a cute little singer from australia uh she um in her video package kind of geeked out over seeing the uh, harry potter set at the universal studios um sang a song called rain on me by lady gaga and ariana grande are you familiar with this song no again i'm not familiar with a whole lot of the lady gaga catalog uh i think there's just i think maybe one or two songs and i can't even name them but if i heard them i'd be like yeah i recognize that song but no i i do not know this song do you know how you like wake lady gaga up from a mat from a nap no p -p 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 poker face <laughs> <laughs> it's a great dad joke there Jay. oh thank you all right yeah. 
so uh, she's going to sing this song, Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande. Um, I uh, was not familiar with the song either. Um, she felt like she was pitchy at parts. Uh, I didn't think that this song really highlighted her talents. Um, and what I wrote was, I think that the song was a little too mature for her. And I don't know exactly what I mean by that. Like if it's, um, you know, her voice just wasn't grown up enough for it or uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but the, I said the song was too mature for her. Um, how are you feeling about Annie Jones' performance? I really liked her audition performance and I, you're right. I, there was something wrong about, I think it was the wrong song choice. I actually thought at the very beginning, is it, it does the beginning of it kind of mention was it slow ride? Um, that's what I thought the song was at the very beginning. I was like, well, that's an interesting rendition of slow <laughs> ride. Uh, and then as she sang on, I'm like, that's not slow ride. So, um, but uh, I, I, it, it didn't feel right. I, I love watching Annie Jones. She's a lot of fun, but I didn't feel like this was the right song for her. Um, it's, it's also interesting, we found out in her package that she got to come, come to the U.S. from Australia. She did. Uh, she um, wasn't thinking she was going to be able to make the trip. And then for whatever reason, she got the, the okay to do it. And so she uh, packed up and there she was at Universal Studios. That, that would be an interesting, it'd be interesting to find out how that came about because I know they're, they're limiting international travel. Um, mm -hmm. I know New Zealand and Australia have done a great job at, you know, I, I think New Zealand has reported you know, they're, they've been, uh, they've had zero cases in like over a hundred days. Yeah. Uh, so, so they're doing a fantastic job. I think Australia is also doing a pretty good job. Um, but I, I know we're limiting international travel. So just be interesting to see how, how that came about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, not hard to, uh, keep infections down when you are literally on an Island. Yeah. Um, so that, that helps, uh, to you know curtail the uh income of the of the virus but um yeah and so maybe that has something to do with it is like uh yeah you can come here uh just as long as you're not coming from a hot spot and australia is not a hot spot so yeah yeah um yeah yeah, yeah. uh heidi said i'm so excited you were able to come it's not an easy song and you should be very proud of yourself uh, Sophia said, were you nervous? And she said, yes. And she said, well, it didn't seem like it. You looked so comfortable. You're having the best time. I love that you picked this song. And then Howie said, I think you're a superstar, but like I said, uh, but I like your last performance better. So, um, uh, not maybe the highest praise from the judges. You know, they were looking for things to to compliment her on. Uh, I like your last performance better is not usually uh, something you want to hear yeah. after uh, after <laughs> after your quarterfinal performance. Yeah. Uh, oh, after her performance, I put out a Twitter poll. Okay. I love, I love doing Twitter polls, Jay. I, w I wish we had more options than just four options. <laughs> they, they limit us to four. Okay. Uh, so I said, uh, pick a singer. I said, uh, Annie Jones, Danelia, or Roberta. Ooh. Okay. Um, uh, well, I'm similar to last week. We had the Annie Jones or just uh, Danelia Roberta question. Right. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like Annie Jones is kind of a, a not a a competitor, not not in the competition after that performance. So. Uh, you know, much to uh, AGT commenters chagrin. Uh, <laughs> do, do I stick with uh, what I said before and say Roberta Battaglia, or do I come succumb to the peer pressure and uh, and and smoke the Danelia, uh, whatever you guys are passing around? So <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I would no, say I would say before before you give your response, we need to tell AGT commenter pull over to the side of the road. <laughs> Take a breath. Don't, don't crash your car. That's right. Everything's okay. <laughs> uh, no. Um, but like, it, it really, it really is nitpicky between those two. I, I don't think that Danelia is that much better or that Roberta is that much better. They feel both very 
very capable uh, singers. I'm I'm going to go ahead and say that Roberta's uh, alto voice is more engaging to me. I will still take Roberta. Okay. Well, only 18% agreed with you on this. Boo. Uh, this was, uh, and, and as, um, as our good friend AGT commenter has said that Danelia is the Yankees of AGT. And uh, she went out to a whopping 74% lead in this poll. Ooh. And uh, I'm sorry, Annie Jones, you only got 6.8% of the vote out of 59 votes. Um, good. It was uh, it's good, good feedback uh, to kind of hear, hear that, but I'm sorry, Annie Jones. All right. Well, that's uh that was Annie Jones performance. I'm, yep. uh, I'm she's adorable. She yes. has a lot of wonderful years of singing and performing ahead of her. Um, just maybe not. Um, th- this may not be the year for you. Right. Uh, all right, sixth act of the night. We've got one off your draft board, uh, finally. <laughs> Malik Dope. Uh, he's our drummer. He um, uh, dances and drums. He has multiple drums that he drums on and dances behind and keeps the beat. Uh, it, he uh, I, At the very beginning, I wrote down, it was kind of hard to hear the drums a little like it felt like it was kind of drowned out by his, his background music. Um, but he did much like he did last time. He started with this line of six, seven snare drums in front of him. Uh, and then he moved to a trap set and he banged on that for a little while. And he jumped over the trap set and there was a big fire behind him. I know you love that. Yep, it's always positive. When we get fire. Uh, and he moved over to like a line of uh, bass drums that he drummed on. And then he moonwalked and he grabbed a third drumstick and he was like juggling the drumsticks. And he's meanwhile uh, playing this rhythm on the multiple drums that he's moonwalking past. I can't moonwalk juggle drumsticks <laughs> or play these rhythms and he's doing all three. Yes. Uh, so that was cool. I really liked that. Um, the one, so I, I mentioned I couldn't hear the drums that great, but uh, the other thing I wanted to say is in the um, stage show blast that I mentioned, uh, that's like the, um, uh, I mentioned this a few episodes ago. It's, it's the stage show, like marching band production. Uh, they do a drum feature where they've got all these uh, snare drums across the stage and they like are dressed in black and the, the drums and the sticks are white. And when they, they turn on the black lights, it's like you just see these, these drumsticks all in sync going like crazy. And it was Malik, you know, in contrast, was wearing white with these white drumsticks in front of him, and you couldn't really see that. Like he could really highlight that so much better if he if he kind of took this staging cue from Blast, how they highlighted the sticks like that it was super cool. Uh, would love to have seen it, but uh, um, it's still a really really fun performance. I smiled throughout it. It's a very nitpicky thing to say, like. I couldn't see your drumsticks as well as maybe I could have. (laughs) So uh, with all that said, I'm, I'm a little jealous that you, uh, that you got him off the, (laughs) off the, uh, off the draft board. Yeah. Thank you. I I enjoy having him on my team. Uh, He's a lot of fun. Uh, He, he keeps the beat for, for the rest of the, uh, the people on our team. Uh, But you missed one important instrument that he had on the stage uh ukulele you missed, the, you missed the gong oh yeah okay yep yes. there was a big yep. gong involved yeah so he had the the snares he had the the kit and he had a gong and the bass drums uh and he's just kind of going he's you know giving each each thing their turn while he's doing moonwalks fires all over the place um he doesn't really do any flips or cartwheels it'd be nice to kind of you know maybe throw that in there a little tumbling maybe uh i don't know yeah. if he I don't know if you want to take the drum kit and dangle it from the ceiling and go upside down. Or not. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that, uh, but uh, I, I really enjoy him. He's um, he's got a he's got a great personality. He's got a big smile. A um, lot of fun to watch. A lot of fun to watch. Really, really likable. I want to cheer for him. Uh, Sophia said, "Who says drums can't be the main event? This was better than the first time. I think it's spectacular." 
uh, Howie said, I keep saying this, but you're my new favorite act of the night. <laughs> uh, and then he went on to say, you don't just play the music, you become the music, which I thought was a really nice compliment. Like yeah. you, you could tell that it was just like oozing out of his, out of his soul. Like yeah. it, it wasn't just like he was um, just, just manufacturing it. Like it was who he is who he is he becomes the music uh and then heidi said uh i felt like a musical it it felt like a musical obstacle course it was absolutely incredible there isn't a moment where we could get bored so i felt like that was pretty high praise from the judges pretty insightful stuff uh i i like malik um I, i i don't see him winning the season but i can definitely imagine him in the finals yeah, I, I, I could too. Uh, you, you mentioned you had trouble hearing the drums because of the backing track. I saw mm-hmm. several other people mention they had some trouble hearing the drums as well. I, I watch it, of course, with headphones on, so I was able to get a little bit better sound out of my headphones, and I was able to hear the drums. Um, it, it was um, the, the backing track was overpowering the drums a little bit, but I could, I could make out. I had to f- focus on it, but I could make out the drums over the backing track yeah and you know maybe uh, that was a artistic choice maybe that was on purpose like you know to make you kind of lean in a little bit to make you focus i don't know um i've i've heard of uh more nefarious things going on uh so (laughs) um yeah malik dope um uh, yeah maybe next time i'll i'll try it with the headphones in. i don't know um all right speaking of nefarious things we've got our seventh act of the night one off your uh off your board we've got max major uh he is our magician mentalist um his video package we see some forced perspective stuff really 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 reminded me of uh dom chambers intro package yes Yes, you're not the first one to mention that a lot of people said Um, that yes because it was Dom Chambers intro pack. Right. Like it, it was the like the same props, the same like mini tiny you know shot glass beers up close to the camera, and him standing way behind. <clears throat> and they zoom out, and you see their their little shot glass sized beers, and um, like the red solo cup, which is just a sticker that's like long and flat, laid on the table, and when he, you know, from the right angle, it looks like a red solo cup, but it's not. So um yeah max major okay so he's gonna come out on stage he's actually comes out barefoot uh says uh well i i wrote down this is his first time performing for the judges like live in person yes (laughs) which is a pretty unique thing to make it this far into the competition and never having been in the same room as the judges yeah but we've we've had other acts that we haven't even seen on tv and they're in the court they're in this this stage you know we we just talked about a dance uh, act yeah. that we've seen about three seconds of and they're here right right so okay uh all that to say 2020 is a weird year yeah. um <laughs> okay so everybody in the at-home audience uh he's instructed them all to have a blank sheet of paper and a pen or a marker uh and something happens and he has them all draw an image on their papers and then uh he is um going to have uh he's going to set his watch uh on the the table away from him how he close your eyes picture a clock picture it spinning it stops what time does it stop at Four o'clock. It matches exactly. Wow. Um, so that happened. Uh, and then Howie, uh, close your eyes again. You are now on an empty street. There's a billboard. Draw for us what is on that billboard. And what he draws is like a sun with a smiley face inside. And in an envelope on the stage, Max drew a picture of a sun with a smiley face inside. And then he has everybody, well, I should say, then he reveals that he planted these ideas in his video package. And as they play back his video package, we see uh, all these suns and smiley faces that were in the background that he um, says he, he sort of forced this image into, uh, into how he's mind. And, and um, uh, then he has all the, 
people at home reveal their pictures and it is the same smiley face sun images so uh it was pretty good it was pretty good little act i i liked it what were you thinking of max major after this uh, I, I really liked it too. You know, I, I like these minimalist type acts. Uh, it, it's a little bit different with the audience not being there in the room uh, and kind of being him being separated away from the judges. Uh, but I, I really, I really enjoyed this. Uh, there's apparently a lot of controversy going on around uh, his act. Um, it's just, a lot of a lot of speculation i mean there's been some people that have just said that it's it's not all that it was supposed to be on there uh, i'm not gonna go to a whole lot of detail because i really don't want to kind of expose it but i'll just i'm just gonna say there's been some controversy jay i don't know if you've seen any of that um, i did okay. i did see a bit of that and okay. i i don't know if the um uh, skepticism came through in my voice as I was telling that or not. <laughs> uh, I, I was trying not to, but yeah. um, so, you know, when, when, you know, 3000 people have the exact same picture, uh, there's, there's something going on or something that we missed. Like there's yeah. something nefarious here. So um, that's uh, uh, all that to say, like, you know, it, it presented really well on the TV. It, it it did at at the time that I was watching it, I really enjoyed it. You know, it's it's kind of ruined it a little bit for me to kind of know that there's been some controversy. But at the time that I was watching the performance, I enjoyed it. Yep, yep, and that's that's how I felt. Howie said, yeah. "This is unbelievable. You are worthy of going through." Heidi said, "I thought this was really really cool. I love that you told us how it's done." <laughs> <laughs> uh sophia said amazing i enjoyed it so creative and i love how you included the virtual audience so yep. uh i felt like this was better than his audition uh i do appreciate that he found a way to engage the virtual audience that is not something that we've seen any of them do yet right um, I, so i, I like I, that I I really liked his audition. I think it was kind of on par with what he did in his audition. It was a little bit longer. Um, of course, he was there in person, uh, but I, I liked his audition too. Uh, so once his performance was over, I did another Twitter poll, Jay. Um, and we don't have a whole lot in this season to kind of compare him to. So I dug back into the AGT archives and went with some of our favorite mentalist acts. Okay. Kind of compared him to some of the ones that we've, We've grown to love over the, the season. So um, I just said, pick a mentalist. Uh, you know, my, my Twitter polls, they're, they're pretty basic, Jay. I don't, I don't really go real deep on my questions. Just leave it pretty pick simple. Pick one. Yeah, pick one. That's all you got. All right. Uh, so we have the clairvoyance, you know, one of my favorite acts of all time on AGT. Yep. Uh, we have Colin Cloud. Yes. Uh, we have the sentimentalists. Uh, poor man's clairvoyance. <laughs> yes. And okay. Max Major. So. Okay. Um, of those four, I think I would pick Colin Cloud. Okay. I, I like, I, I think that a solo mentalist is a more impressive act than a duo. Like a okay. duo could have, you know, signals or tells or something that they're able to communicate with each other. I think that a solo is a more impressive act and I would take, uh, I'll, I'll take Colin Cloud. No, and that's a solid choice. I will. I can. I can buy into that choice. I usually go with the clairvoyance more because it feels more natural. They don't. It doesn't feel like they're really putting on a show. It feels like they're. It 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 does feel like they actually have the powers. Uh, they don't. They don't. Uh, you know, it's. It doesn't feel like it's trickery in any way. I mean, we we know in some sort of way it is, but they don't lead on. It's all about the presentation uh, with them. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, our, our, our fun group that or couple that we had, was it last season or in the champions, the sentimentalists? Yes. Was it last season? I, I think um, they were season 14. Okay. And then of course, Max Major. So, uh, of the 29 people that voted 48%, uh, prefer the clairvoyance, 31% prefer Colin cloud, 13%. Uh, and this was right after the performance. So it's not. You know, it's, it's not there's some recency later. bias bias. Yeah. Right. This was, you know, boasted right after his performance. Uh, 13% said Max Major and then a 
wonderful 17% or 7%, I'm sorry, like the sentimentalists. So, oh, yeah. And they had forgotten whether the sentimentalists were the clairvoyants or the clairvoyants were the sentimentalists. Were they, <laughs> maybe so, the, yes. The, <laughs> maybe that's where their 7% came from. Yes. Oh, which one did I like better? Uh, I'm just going to guess that it's <laughs> this one. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's, that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I think that recency bump certainly wouldn't hurt Max Major. Um, and that, you know, like watching that live, like that live felt like a really, really neat performance. Yes. Um, yeah. With the, uh, shenanigans that we mentioned, it seems like yeah. maybe that's not all that it's cracked up to be, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling like a, uh, live, presentation versus a uh (laughs) pre-recorded performance you know like they they edited something out it seems that um might have uh might have revealed how it's done a little bit so yeah um now yeah he he did he did play back his uh intro package in fast motion to kind of show all the little subtleties and hints that he left for uh you know for the the audience and for for howie's all the little sons and welcome to sunny california you know all those were in there and when i went back and watched it a second time and actually watched the intro package yes all those things were there so it wasn't like something they plugged in um right as a, as, right, as a yeah. second recording those those yeah. were there in his intro package and in this dvr age like you better believe they were there i don't think he <laughs> yes people will check <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh cool all right uh i am ready to talk about the next act of the night okay. uh, one that i was really happy to take off the board and put on my uh in, in my draft group we've got the bone breakers a, yes. um, a contortionist quartet i mean trio uh <laughs> that uh <laughs> In their intro, intro package, they talk about how they uh, come from a city of 12 million people, uh, but they all live in impoverished. It's it's an impoverished city, uh, nearly 7,000 miles away. They say um, it's not easy for them to make a living performing. Um, and uh, man, these guys are bendy. And like, if one contortionist makes you uncomfortable. Three contortionists makes it twi- uh, three times more <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Like these guys do some really cool stuff. You know, it's great that they work as a group, as a team on their contortion, and sort of know each other's limits and and you know find those limits as a as a troop instead of just one person on stage doing it. Uh, I think that this is better than any individual contortionist uh, having having the group of them together. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, move that really stood out to me, um, was, uh, one guy was standing, uh, sort of in the middle of the stage. Second guy like sits on his feet and wraps his arms around his knees. The third guy, uh, well, I guess th- the first guy that's standing, he's got his arms like over, uh, a pipe, like a, like an ox yoke. Um, and then the third guy then takes that pipe and he spins it so that his, uh, he's doing a complete 360 and you know that his feet aren't moving because the guy's sitting on them. So uh, he goes from, you know, facing you to twisted all the way around and he's looking at you again. Um, that was a really, really neat, uh, neat trick. Uh, and then of course he like let go of the pipe and he like, you know, unspun <laughs> you know all, all the way back around you know 360 degrees plus some uh just to make it extra flashy for the cameras uh these guys that, that's just one of the many many things that they did so many unimaginable ways they bent their bodies i i i love this kind of act i love them uh would you how do you feel about the bone breakers like is this something that you lean into or you lean away from I, I don't lean away from it. Um, I'm not sure I lean into it either. I mean, I do like, I do like contortionist acts. Um, this one's a little bit different. It's a little more to the extreme. And I do like how you say that they are, they are a team. It's not three individuals up there doing contortions. It's one guy doing a contortion and another one like bending that guy's 
you know, leg to the other side or turning another guy around. So it's, it's them working together and actually forcing one of the guys to go into a certain pose. Uh, yeah. It's not just, they're not just up there three doing different things. Now uh, I, I really, I, I do like them because I'm, it's, it's cringeworthy. It is. I mean, it's, it's a variety act. It's not really a danger act. It is a, it's a variety act. And I like this type of act. The one thing I'm going to say, I'm going to back up. I love what production is doing with the stage this season. I think the okay. effects that they're doing with the stage is phenomenal. Uh, it's nothing we've ever seen before. Uh, for you Star Trek fans out there, I compared it to a holodeck last last week. Um, it's 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 absolutely incredible. For this particular form performance, though, I think it was a little overkill um, because they had. The guys were wearing what, like maybe neon green or neon yellow type yeah. spandex outfits. And then you had some bright, flashy colors up on the screen. The screen graphics, I mean, were great. I love the music. I love the graphics that they were doing. But there was no contrast between the screen and the, and the guys. So I was really getting lost. Um, I couldn't focus on what they were doing because there was no contrast there. And there was a bunch of flashy lights. and um, it, it, it was very distracting uh, during their performance. So I was having trouble kind of figuring out what it was they were doing and I couldn't focus on it very well. Yeah. Uh, kind of like uh, Malik Dope's drumsticks with his white, you yeah. know, clothes behind it. Uh, the, their yellow uh, jumpsuits with the yellow behind it uh, does make it a little bit difficult. I agree. Um, but golly, the, the ways that these guys move their bodies is just unbelievable. It really, really is. Um, you know, Mel B. And I'll agree with you. It's just it was very hard to focus on and see what it was that they were doing. Yeah. yeah yes, this but is, I, I will agree that they are, they are incredible. This is the kind of act that Mel B would like <laughs> just turn her seat, chair around and just not watch it. And then afterwards say, I didn't watch it. It was I, too painful. Yeah. I, I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. um, okay. Heidi said, you guys have some strange moves. It was quite interesting. I loved it. Uh, how he said, you guys are now my favorite act of the night. Uh, I'm seeing such originality. It was exciting and thrilling, but painful to watch. Uh, friends don't fold other friends was how he ended. <laughs> and Sophia said it was exhausting for me to watch. Uh, I want to see it and I don't want to see it. So she's like, you know, leaning towards that Mel B like, Oh boy, I don't, I don't really care for this. Uh, but at, she did watch it and she, yeah. uh, at least had something to say about it. So, uh, there you go. That's bone breakers. I like them. I like this contortionist act. I like that it's um, not just one person and you know gravity that they're working with. It's you know three people and gravity, and you know they're able to um, amplify it <laughs> yes. by by helping each other with their with their contortion. And and I think they kept saying, you know, you haven't seen anything yet. We've got we've got more to do. Is that basically what they were saying? Uh, I, I didn't catch that specifically, okay. but... but yeah, they're basically saying, hey, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> just yeah. just wait. I don't know. Who is the, the guy in Champions that we saw? Uh, Strauss, Strauss, uh, Serpent. Strauss Serpent? Yes, it's like and three of like, him. Every time I, I yes. think of him, I, I think of the time that he crawled into the box yeah. uh, crotch first. And it's like, <laughs> you know, like I, I can't even imagine like my body being close to doing that, that I would be like, oh, yeah, let me see if I can do that on the stage. I think that's might be a really flashy trick. Like it's, it's so far outside of what, what, what people can normally do. Like that's the thing that is just mind boggling to me is, is, you know, like I, I don't even in any way, shape or form think about doing these kinds of things that they do very routinely. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Enjoyable. That's, that's enjoyable. all I have to say. They're yep. awesome. I love them. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Ninth act of the night. We got Sheldon Riley. Uh, he is on my draft board. He's a singer. Uh, he's the one that uh, likes to wear um, 
like a mask over his face or a, a curtain of some sort, beaded curtain over his face. Um, he is going to sing uh, Kylie Minogue's Min- Can't Minogue? Get You Out of My Head, Minogue. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Kylie. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't know the song. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, Th- this Michelle- song, th- this song, Jay, is on a Cody Patterson playlist. Oh yeah, this is, a, this is a frequent play of one Cody Patterson. Yes. Oh, so I'm okay. Very so familiar with, I'm very familiar with this song. What did you think of Sheldon's rendition of "Can't Get You Out of My Head"? So this was a very interesting cr- rendition because the song is more. It's like an upbeat. It's a pop, very poppy song. Uh, I think it's from the '90s. I mean, it's it's kind of that genre. Uh, techmo, not really techmo, but it's very poppy very poppy song okay okay uh so for him to kind of do it more as like it's very low very low key um it's almost like uh what am i trying to say it's not really a love song i guess maybe like a love song type uh it's very slow um is very very interesting is is very unique um i i i enjoyed it because of just it the way that he presented it uh because normally it's it's a da- it's a dance type song um where you, you dance to it in a club or at a school dance hmm. um so for him to do it this way very unique very different very enjoyable. i wonder if i've if i've heard it and just didn't recognize it because think, it was so, i think you may have yeah so different yeah um okay so uh he has sort of a a throaty voice to uh, his his singing style uh he demonstrated that he has some range um i i wrote down his strength is how much emotion he puts into his performances like it it looks like it's draining to him to to put on these performances uh yeah i mean like you think it takes a lot out of him just to put this on yeah yeah Yeah. at minimum that's what he presents so um you know, I'm. I I took Sheldon Riley off the board because I felt like he, uh, America loves singers, and he is a memorable one. That's yes. that's kind of what I what I was thinking. So yep. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so real real quick, Jay, yeah. uh, can't can't get you out of my head, Kylie Minogue, uh, released in two thousand one. Okay, uh, that's listed. the year I graduated. Okay, it's listed as a dance pop, techno pop, neo disco type song. Those are all the words you said. Yes, just not in that order. <laughs> yes, so it's it's very poppy, very disco. Yes. Okay. Um, so if uh, it's the year you graduated, that may have been like some. It may have been played very frequently at some high school dance. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look at that okay. um, <laughs> when we're off the air here. Okay. Uh, okay, Sophia said, this was very emotional. I think it's so unique. The costumes, and the magic, the mystery. I hope that people understand what you're doing. Uh, Howie said, we're all trying to find a path to fit in. Your style is original, and that gives us all power. Whatever that means, Howie. <laughs> uh, I, I felt like he was just kind of like word salad, like, uh, whatever. Um, Heidi said... I'm really happy you found yourself. I love the mystery of it all. My favorite is when you belt it out at the end. So um, I, I think the judges enjoyed this. Uh, it's it's a unique performance. It's a memorable performance. Uh, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he made it in. I wouldn't be surprised if he were, you know, uh, just out of the top five. Yeah, I, I think he is a favorite going into this, uh, going into this round. Um, I think he's a favorite to get to the finals and be one of the you know final five, uh, or even to win. Um, so it's you know it's, it wouldn't surprise me to see him go through because he's supposed to be a big favorite. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I think he's a he's a memorable act. So you know, with that, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, well, we did our final Twitter poll of the night. Okay. For Sh- for Sheldon Riley, so we had Sheldon Riley pick a singer. Very simple. Okay. Uh, Sheldon Riley. Nolan Neal or Archie Williams? Um, I uh, think I took Archie Williams like right off the top uh, in our in our draft. I like Archie Williams of those three by by a considerable amount. 
Okay. Well, only 27% agreed with you. Really? Um, yeah. And this, again, maybe recency bias. I mean, but yeah. still, I, I'm, I, from what I understand, Sheldon is supposed to be a, a big favorite up there with uh, Dan- Danelia. Um, they're supposed to be the two big favorites. Okay. Uh, so 57% said Sheldon, 15% said Nolan Neal, and 27% said Archie Williams. Boy, America doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, I, I think I enjoy, I really enjoyed Nolan Neal. I think I also enjoy Archie over the other two. Okay, okay. So you're not going to leave me on an island alone here. Thank no, you. No, no, no. I, I, I'll, I'll, of these three, I'll come along with you as well. Okay, all right. Well, that's that's good. Um, yep. <laughs> I, I think Archie is is the best of the three. I, I don't think it's really that close. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, recency certainly counts or something, too. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Tenth act of the night. We've got Alan Silva. He's our aerialist. He does the uh, uh, the silks uh, hanging down from above the stage. Uh, he's a little person, uh, so uh, you know it's, it, I, I guess, extra memorable. Uh, his video package talks about um, he, you know, being bullied and you know looking different, having a different shaped body, is is hard. Uh, to grow up with. Um, And uh, in fact, tonight he's going to do the move he did when he broke his neck. I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at him breaking his (laughs) neck. I'm I'm sorry. That was very, in very bad taste. I'm laughing because I was thinking back to last week where we, I asked you the question, do they always have to say, do they always have to come back and do the act that they either almost broke some, or they broke something, almost died or they've never performed it in front of anyone ever before. Um, that's that's why I paused after I yes. said he's going to do the move that he did when he broke his neck. Like, you know, it, I've never done this in front of a live audience. It's the I, I haven't done this move since the time that I you know ended up in the ICU. I, yes, like th- this is a a trope of danger acts that yes. they they go back to it. We see it so many times. Um, you know, it's it's not something to laugh at. Like, yes, this is difficult and it is like literally dangerous. It is yes. literally, you know, putting your life on the line. Um, but, uh, you know, like you don't have, not everything has to be hyperbole, right? It doesn't have to be the biggest, fastest, strongest, you know, most whatever. Like it's just, just let a really good act stand for itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he also said, in his audition that he's never performed in front of his wife before. Yeah. Which I found, I mean, I'm sure it's true. It's just a little hard to believe. It's like it's she's never seen you perform before. This may not be his day job. <laughs> I don't know. I, okay. It's, it's weird. That's weird. Yeah. That, uh, that's all I was laughing. I wasn't laughing at him, you know, yeah. breaking his neck. That's, I just want to get yeah. that out. There. Okay. All right, so um, he uh, he did his move. He he did his act. I don't know what the move was that he did where he broke his neck. Um, he looked great. Uh, I I enjoyed it throughout. He's very very strong. He's yes. a really good showman. Like he he really knows how to uh, look good on the silks. Um, so you know he's he's doing. You know what I wrote down is a very traditional performance. Uh, lots of you know flying around in circles, up and down. You know, climbs up the silks and then like rolls down them. Um, and then the music stopped, and then they bring some spikes out onto the stage and they place them below him while he's like wrapping himself up. You know, maybe a dozen feet up above the spikes, and then he like quickly unrolls 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 down towards the spikes and catches himself just before he you know would impale himself on these spikes on the stage um it was fun it looked incredibly dangerous what's not to like about about alan silva i i thought it was great yeah it 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 was great and i think the i think that trick at the very end is probably the one that where he broke his neck sand spikes Uh, i don't think he had the (laughs) spikes at that time they just added the spikes 
uh, there in order to make it a little more dangerous. Now you got to remember, Jay, this is also Alfredo's brother from Deadly Games. Yes. So he's probably gotten a few tips of how to, you know, play to us as an audience and how to make it a little more dangerous and how to be the showman and play the stage. It's I think it's benefited benefited him. Um, if, if a lot of people commented, you know, the spikes that came out, they looked exactly like the 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 arrows that Alfredo uses uh, in his performance. Um, so you know, if 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 Al if um, if uh, oh, who are we talking about? Alan Silva. <laughs> Alan Silva. Thank you. I got Alfredo in my brain. Uh, if we if Alan uh, makes it to the finals, it'd be great to see some sort of Alan Silva Deadly Games crossover. Um, where they kind of do their little exhibition thing together sure yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that you know, like in the like in the results show like yes we're gonna have you perform with uh with another act um i'm looking forward to seeing rt williams perform with uh with stevie wonder yeah and uh seeing alan perform with uh with alfredo from deadly games or with deadly yep. games would be would be great so yep yep um yeah, you know, and it just crossed my mind. Um, we don't know that, and maybe he did say it in his video package. I just wasn't paying that close of attention, taking notes. But uh, did he like fall and break his neck, or is it possible like he got twisted up and broke his neck? I, I think the assumption is that he fell and broke his right, neck. That's like the he, assumption, yeah. but maybe not. I don't know. It's just a thought that I had. Okay. Is it because he just said, he, I think he, 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 yeah, I don't remember the words. I just remember him. He did say he remembers the next thing he remembers is waking up in the hospital. So I'd have to go back and listen to see if he said he fell or if he hit the ground or something of that nature. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Uh, Heidi said, I had so much fun watching you. Uh, I had so much fun watching you have so much fun. It was beautiful to watch. Sophia said, breathtaking exciting nerve-wracking i saw some nerves at the end and then howie said america doesn't know you almost didn't do that act tonight the stage was wet and slippery there was too much wind and you did the trick where you broke your neck last time it's your vote america um so you know that is worth mentioning you know what we saw of him on the stage like it did look like there was uh, like dew settling on the stage and there was some amount of wind for him to contend with which made the whole thing look just that much more uh more dangerous and uh actually be not just look but be that much more dangerous uh yeah that's kind of a little interesting uh production tidbit there a little behind the scenes of yeah, the if the if the floor is too wet or if there's too much wind, you know he he can't perform. Um, so I'd just be curious to kind of know what would have happened if he didn't perform. Yeah, they they'd go to the other video uh, of him performing uh, in practices that they would have to okay. use. I guess I okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, we've got uh, next one is off of your uh, draft board. We've got Christina Ray. Uh, she's going to sing Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Uh, this is, uh, man, it, does anybody not love this song? I, I think it's it's a very traditionally, uh, I guess, appreciated song. Uh, if, if you don't already love it, there's a uh, podcast called Revisionist History, which uh, you ought to check it out. Um, by uh, Malcolm Gladwell, and he visits sort of the um, uh, the story behind how this song was written and and came to be what it is. So uh, she sings Hallelujah. Um, it, I enjoyed the heck out of it. What do you think of Christina Ray? Uh, I, I enjoyed this. Well, anytime anytime someone sings this song, I enjoy it. Uh, it's a fantastic song. She, I mean, she belted it out uh, there at the end, just and and then kind of just tapered off. I, I mean, it was it was a great way to kind of in the was this the final performance of the night? I this was the yeah yep. yeah great way to in the in the show. Um, I I love listening to her. I think she she's going to go a long way. She's going to do a she's going to do a lot of things. Yeah yeah yep. And she was she was great. She nailed it. Uh, being the last act of the night is always a really great spot to be in if you want to make it through to the next round, I think. Um, 
Heidi said, you sang this flawlessly. It was so perfect. You could not have done better. Sophia said, that was gorgeous. You sound like a recording artist. You made this song so yours. And Howie said, if there's one word to describe what you just did, it's flawless. You're deserving of the golden buzzer. So that is, uh, that's Christina Ray. Uh, did you then at the end of the episode kind of rank your, uh, one through one through 11? I, I did real quick for that though. I, I just, I, I sent out a tweet right at the end of the performance that I would give all 10 of my votes to the, uh, production crew that handles the, the effects for the stage. Uh, because I think, I, I even think during Christina Ray's performance, it was, did she have another one of those kind of, I'm trying to remember it, like a little island. Did she do something very similar to what I, uh, we saw last week? I honestly don't remember. Okay. okay. I, I just remember there's another fantastic uh, effect during her performance that, you know, they're just, I can't, I can't praise the production crew enough f- for the, the stage effects that we're seeing this year. It's just nothing we've ever seen before. It'd be interesting to know, are they going to come back and do this again next year? Or are they going to go back to the Dolby Theater where it's just going to be, you know, the, the regular screen behind them? Um, I'm absolutely loving the stage effects this year. I mean, I just can't yep. say enough about it. Yep. I, um, I agree that the stages uh, look great. And, you know, with the time that they have to put this all together, um, yeah, it, it's maybe more time than what they're used to, but also it's such a quick turnaround from week to week. How can they yeah. possibly? So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, okay, so yeah, I had my rankings. Do you want me to go through mine or how do you want well, to do let's, this? Uh, what I was thinking is, is let's talk about uh, who do you have as one, two, three, because those are the three that you're expecting to get through without any Duncan Save shenanigans. Okay. And we'll talk four, five, six, which would be sort of that middle of the pack. And, you know, it starts to get a little hairy there. And then we can talk about you know, the rest. Yeah. So, you know, uh, typically I talk about how much I don't like the singers and I'm not really, a, you know, I don't, I'd, I'd rather see other acts go through, but also have talked about, you know, I'm, I'm looking at what I think America is going to vote for and what they're going to do. Not necessarily what I like. I've talked for another last hour and a half about what I like. But then when I get to my rankings and I actually pick who I think is going to go through and what who's going to win, I kind of look at what I think America is going to do. So I had uh, Sheldon Riley as number one, Christina Ray as number two, and the Waffle Crew as number three. Wow. Okay. Um, I had Sheldon Riley eight, Christina Ray as four, and Waffle Crew as three. So I agreed with you on that one. Okay. <clears throat> my one and two, I had Max Major and Bone Breakers. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, who then do you have as four, five, six going in the, uh, in the Duncan save room? Yeah. So my Duncan saves is, uh, Nolan Neal and Max major and dance family. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, so Christina Ray fell into the Duncan save for me. I had Alan Silva there and Malik dope as my number six. Okay. Well, you're, you're not going to appreciate this much thing. Cause I had the bone breakers at eight, Alan Silva, nine. Annie and then Usama at the end. Uh, yeah, I had Annie and Usama as my 10, 11. Uh, nine was Dance Town Family. Um, so, but, you know, some of those uh, that I just didn't feel real strong about. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely some uh, some differences between our, <laughs> our two. Um, yeah. You know, you, you were, you led that off saying you put singers all up there at the top. And I looked at my three. I had Max Major, Mentalist, Bone Breakers, yes. Arcturusness, and Waffle yeah. Crew are dancers. Like, yeah. Uh, and who would have thought that I'd put uh, a dance crew in my top three ever? But here yeah. we are. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, Waffle the last, the, the, Just the last couple of seasons, Jay, we've talked much, so much about how we don't like singers, or we don't really are not big on singers, or we're not big on dance crews. And it's like, oh, we actually have good singers and dance crews this year. So Yeah, it's great when, when you have good ones. Yep, yes. I agree. Uh, okay, so uh, let's fast forward to Wednesday night. We're going to get some results. And the three that are going into the Duncan save are Waffle Crew, Malik Dope, and Nolan Neal. So dance group, our drummer, and uh, Nolan Neal, our, our singer. 
Yeah, I, I got to say this was this was just a big shock to me to see because these are three strong acts to be in the Duncan save. So I mean, we knew it was a strong a strong night anyway. So you know, some some strong some good act is going act is going to go home. But to have these three kind of in the the Duncan save, it's like whew, but who's up there in the top three? Um, yeah, yeah. So I uh, again like what I was projecting and this reality. So I had. Uh, three, six, and seven is how I had these these three ranked. Yeah, I had I had four and five. You know, Malik and Mullen Neal, and then um, Waffle Crew. So I did kind of have them all together, but shifted one spot up. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So I had three. I had them three, four, and five. Okay, instead of four, five, and six. Right. Okay. Uh, so when it came time to do the Duncan save, did you, did you log into the app and, and put a Duncan save on one of these? I, I did not. I was watching on delay, uh, this time and I did not get a chance to, um, I was, I was busy while the show was actually airing and I did not get a chance to log in and do a vote. Okay. Um, I, if I, if I, if you would have, yeah. Yeah. If I would have voted, I probably would have voted for Malik. Um, just because I really like the the drummer, I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, percussionists and drummers and marching bands and all that stuff. So I I probably would have and I and I and he, of course he had fire. Uh, if Dolan <laughs> Neal can bring fire to his performance, then uh, we'll talk. Um, so yeah, I probably would have voted for Malik. I voted Waffle Crew. I uh, I think they are head and shoulders above the other two. Okay. I, I really thought that they were fantastic. I thought that this particular performance in the back lots was just next level. So Yeah, it it was really good. Yes. Um all right. Uh and so Waffle Crew, Malik Dope, Nolan Neal, Howie says, What did I tell each and every one of you? You are my favorite act of the night. <laughs> so uh so there you go. Uh, we're going to jump into, uh, the top three results before we reveal what happens with the Duncan save though. We'll, we'll okay. let it, uh, let it right here. So, uh, first result, we've got Alan Silva and dance town family. Who do you think's going through? Uh, I, I thought that, um, I, I thought it was tough cause this is kind of one of those acts. It was, they were both kind of real close together, but I figured America would have chosen Alan Silva to go through. Uh, yes. And uh, America did choose Alan Silva dance town family. We hardly knew you. Uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> that's that. Uh, okay. Second result of the night. We've got singer versus singer versus singer. Annie Jones, Sheldon Riley, Christina Ray. One of you is going through the second act going through to the semis is Christina Ray. Yeah, so when these three were announced, this is where I was kind of missing the audience because I would love to have heard the gasps that were that would have come from the audience when Sheldon Riley and Christina Ray were both called up there together. Yeah, like Sheldon is like you said, like there's some some chatter out there about him being uh, a favorite, and he was just um, just eliminated. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was a it was a shocker. It really really was. Um, yeah, that was that was something. That was something. So, uh, Sheldon Riley's out. Christina Ray with her really great rendition of uh, Hallelujah. She's going through. Yeah. Uh, so three acts left: uh, Bone Breakers, Max Major, Usama Siddiqui. Um, it's really kind of a toss up. I'm feeling between Bone Breakers and Max Major. Uh, I, I like bone breakers so, so much. I think that max major had a really great performance, um, you know, with, with an asterisk. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I was, I was optimistic that it was bone breakers, but in fact, the third act going through is max major. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of talk on, you know, how does max major get to go through over Sheldon Riley? And my response is that's the way America voted. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, this was not a judge pick. That's the way America voted that way. Uh, yep. so, you know, there's millions of votes that are calculated, millions and millions of votes that are calculated and America chose, uh, Max Major over Sheldon Riley. Yep. So yep. I'm, I'm <laughs> don't know what to say, but that's the way, it's the way it bounces sometimes. That's how um, it is. I, I've, I've been meaning to go back and look, but I think 
in all of the acts where they were not present at all in the state on on stage so we had um was it voices of our city choir where they actually had representatives there in on the stage Uh uh-huh in any of the acts where they were actually on the tv sheldon riley fang e uh dance town and i had that's what i meant to go back and look i'm sure there were others but all of those acts where there was no one actually in the theater were eliminated uh bad salsa went through uh, did they have a did they have a representative in the audi- in the theater or were they solely on the screen i think they were solely on the screen they were okay oh they were still in away. india they were still in india you're right yeah. okay so there that's my okay that blows my theory away okay uh but like they're also ridiculously good so <laughs> ridiculously good that's like, true yes you know, the, if any of them are gonna uh you know buck that trend like bad salsa might be the one to do it yeah the the one that actually doesn't do salsa is the one that's bucking trends (laughs) right right um yeah so that's that's the one that uh that stands out to me as possibly the one that um would would bust that uh bust that theory is is it possible jay that they can never they, they they may not show up in america the rest of the season and win this thing uh yes it's possible okay they are not mathematically eliminated (laughs) (laughs) i guess that is true i'm Uh, just talking about the odds i mean do they uh they're very very good um i uh, man it's really so hard to uh, you know think of these previous weeks and those previous acts and uh you know, up against the acts that we saw more recently and, you know, their dancing versus their singing versus their danger versus, you know, whatever the variety, like it's, it makes a a really hard comparison. Um, I think they're in it. I I think they've got a chance. Yeah. There's a chance they could win this and not even come back to America. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, all right time for some fan questions we're gonna have people in on the screen we're gonna blow them up we're gonna have them uh ask some questions of the judges first question of the night comes from julie from ankeny iowa do do you happen do you do you happen to know julie jay i you're from you're from, you're from iowa i am from iowa and uh, I do, in fact, know who Julie is. Uh, you know who Julie is, okay? But you've never I, met Julie. I don't know her. I haven't okay. shaken her hand, but uh, she is like. So I, I listen to a sports and more radio show every day. Uh, like I, I download the podcast and I, I listen to it every day. And a constant contributor is a gal named Julie that you know she's always got funny things to say or or little you know tidbits like i always see her along on the uh on the the twitter she's tweeting back at him and uh she she has like a little bit of a, a interesting look like she's she's a beautiful lady like she's got dimples and uh like gray hair and she just sort of allows her gray hair to be gray instead of dying it and i've always kind of appreciated like oh, like you know i i can pick her out of a crowd and so they showed Julie up on the screen. I was like, Oh, that's Julie. <laughs> I, I do know who Julie is. <laughs> so, uh, I keep asking you if you know these people from Tennessee and you keep telling me no. And, no, uh, yeah. you know, here's, here's somebody from Iowa and gosh, darn it. I do know her. So yeah. uh, it, it was great, uh, to see a, a, like actually familiar face up on, uh, on the screen so that was kind of fun Ju- uh, julie if you want to be a contributor to agt time we're we welcome you and then we'd have yes then we'd be flooded with iowans is that is that the proper term iowans yes iowa nights uh, nope iowan iowans okay, okay. uh what, what do you call somebody from tennessee a tennessee this isn't a dad joke by the okay yeah tennessee <laughs> yeah that sounds like a, a good setup to a dad joke um, yes, it does. <laughs> okay uh all right so we we got to see julie on the screen uh if you're listening to this hey julie thanks for all you do for central iowa um okay next uh we've got john dorm boss he's gonna do what's uh 
at the end of the day, it's a pretty simple card trick, but he is always engaging and fun to watch. Uh, John Dorenboss. Um, anything to say about him? Uh, yes, he is one of the greatest uh, acts of all time from AGT. Um, he he never fails us. I love not that he just does the card tricks, but his inspiration that he does, his little motivations that he kind of sticks in there. It's it's so touching. It's so it's 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 just great. Um, of of the entire thing, when I heard that he was going to be on this week, I was more excited to see John Dornboss than I was the Eleven X that showed on Tuesday night. Uh, just because I love John Dornboss so much. Yeah, he's great. Uh, yeah. He's like <laughs> he's so smooth, player, yes. right? And and yeah, so he's yes. got like this this manliness, this cachet about him. Uh, he's got kind of this, this scratchy manly voice. Like you, you really want to listen to him. He seems just so super likable, uh, just like, you know, motivational speaker, you know, through and through, uh, he's got the, the card tricks down. It, it, it's, it's great. I, yeah. I always look forward to seeing him on the screen. Yeah. So. But even like his little motivation that he does, he's like, Hey, when we're, when we do things together, you know, we can make things happen. Everyone here at the production crew has been fantastic. You know, it's just all those little things that he kind of just sticks in there that doesn't feel forced. Um, it doesn't feel pressured. It's like, it's just natural to him yep. uh, to kind of just stick those in there. You know, he's, he does his card tricks, but he's also a little motivational speaker, which is, which is great. Um, now Terry called him an NFL star. And I think I, I think that's a little bit of a stretch, uh, Terry. Now, he did do, I think, 13, 14, 15 seasons, something like that in the NFL. Long career in the NFL. Yeah. But he was, like, but he was a long snapper. Like so, a consummate journeyman, right? Like just yes. constantly moving from one team to the next to wherever uh, he was needed. I, I think he was mainly with the Eagles most of his career. Oh, see, okay. Yeah, I think he was with the Eagles most of his career. I think he then uh, went. I think he was let go, and then he went to the uh, the Saints, where then he had to do a physical. They found out he had that heart issue. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. And then he had the the surgery. If they hadn't found that, I mean, he would have he would have died. Um, but yes, uh, to kind of, I mean, he's he's great. He was in the NFL for a long time. Terry, let's let's slow the roll. I think it's a little much to call him an NFL star. Um, he was uh, he was a great long snapper. So I'll kind of leave it at that. <laughs> He was from the NFL. He yes. is a star. I guess so. If you, <laughs> you want to put the you two were together. very excited to see him. I was very excited to see John Dornboss. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, let's let's get down to it. Who's yeah. going to be saved between the Waffle Crew, Malik Dope, and Nolan Neal? Uh, the Duncan save goes to the Waffle Crew. Uh, so they are going to be going through, and now we've got Malik Dope. And Nolan Neal, our singer, yeah. our percussionist. Yeah, uh, so real, real quick, Jay, I think Terry said this was the closest vote they've ever had. Oh, really? Between, between um, with, with Waffle Crew winning. I think it was the closest they'd ever had. Wow, there. okay. Um, so it comes down to the judges. They, he, whoever gets two of the three judges' votes is going to be going through to the semis. Uh, first, we go to Heidi. She says uh, that she's going to vote for Malik. Sophia says, uh, no, I'm going to vote for Nolan Neal. And I'm thinking, man, I could really use the points if Howie says Nolan Neal. Uh, <laughs> but Howie instead says Malik Dope. So Malik Dope, welcome to the semis. Nolan Neal, uh, go back to Tennessee. Uh, see if you can find Cody L. Patterson and, uh, and, and make friends with him. Uh, yeah, I can hang out with him. I mean, I don't, I don't know what all we would have in common. But, it just doesn't um, seem like you have very many friends in in Tennessee. Is no, all. I, have, I have friends. They're just not on AGT. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, my, my my friends. Oh, speaking of which, uh, Jay, uh, I don't know if you were aware of this, but uh, our good friend AGT commenter was actually supposed to be uh, a question person. Oh, really? On this episode? Yes, he was. He tweeted that the other night that uh, he was actually he was supposed to be on there um, and ask a question, but then he was cut in the round right before, you know, I guess the, I guess he was cut in the semifinals. Hmm. Um, but yes. There you go. That's uh that's fun. I wonder if he, 
he must have had an opportunity to uh, see a little bit behind the scenes or have some conversations along the way then. I, I think so. Um, I think we plan on having him on here uh, maybe in a couple weeks. Great. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. And we can, we can ask him about that and kind of if he feels comfortable. I'm not going to put any yeah. pressure on him, but if yeah. he feels comfortable talking about that, um, we'll be more than welcome to let him do that. Sweet. That'll be cool. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll reach out to my friend Julie and see if she okay. has any, uh, any input for us. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, cool. Cool. All right. Uh, so um, there you go. That is uh, Malik Dope and Waffle Crew are making it out of the Duncan Save group. And Nolan Neal is uh, uh, unfortunately going to have to uh, call it a season from there. Yeah. That's a shame. I mean, he was, he was really good. Um, I know there's some, again, some more controversy with, Max Major getting in. Um, I would like to have seen Nolan Neal in. Uh, I'd like to hear him another week. Um, we 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 think we have a couple of uh, wild card spots. We you know after after uh, uh, quarterfinals four, Jay. Maybe we look at you know who we think is going to be the um, wild cards. Right, right. And we're saying that uh, wild cards uh don't count as points to make it into the semis but correct uh they could be um they, they can still earn you points if they make it past the semis that's correct uh okay. my my anticipation is that so 10 uh was it 10 x well it would be 20 x would be a total through, of 20 yep total of 20 10 in each semi uh semifinal and then i'm i'm guessing they may do one wild card for each semifinal so two wild cards is my anticipation uh, and then they may do the same uh five go through from each one and then you have a top 10 in the finals yep that makes sense to me okay uh okay so next week the last 11 acts that we're going to see uh were mentioned by terry cruz and let me get to my list uh, because it's kind of funny because he did not, in fact, list 11 acts. And uh, we had heard that there was going to be a little bit of shakeup to this, which doesn't seem to be what he mentioned either. So, uh, in alphabetical order, what we've got here is Alex Hooper, the insult comedian, uh, the Bellow Sisters, the uh, acrobatic trio, hand balancers. Uh, we've got Brandon Leak. This is the uh, spoken word poet, uh, Howie's Golden Buzzer. Uh, we've got um, the CA Wildcats, everybody's favorite. Uh, yeah, go cheer, to cheer, 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 Twitter. That's right. Come out. Uh, we've got Selena, our uh, kind of tomboyish singer from San Diego. Uh, Divas and Drummers of Compton. Now, this is where uh things get a little bit funny because we had heard that divas and drummers were supposed to be was it clear back in week one and then didn't perform because somebody came down with covid and then we had heard that they were going to be replaced with uh who's the unicyclist wesley williams wesley williams the one wheeled wonder wesley williams the one wheeled wonder uh was going to take the place of the divas and drummers of compton but they mentioned that it was going to be Divas and Drummers. So maybe it's Divas and Drummers. Or maybe it's Wesley Williams, the one-wheel wonder. Uh, <laughs> we will wait and see. We will find out when you find out. <laughs> we will wonder for a week. Uh, okay. Uh, Kennedy Dodds, uh, 15-year-old singer-guitarist. We've got Lightwave Theater Company. Uh, uh, the Life-Size Puppets. Yes. That kind of bothers me. Life-Size Puppets. Human-Sized Puppets maybe no life size they call, they call oh. them life size puppets yeah yeah but puppets can come in any size you want they could be a hand puppet uh, that's a life a size life, a, li- a life size is normally the typical uh same size as a human being as a average human being oh, well or or if it's a dog then it would be the same size as an average dog because i think uh, that in their first audition they had a dog puppet and it was the same size as your average size dog that would be a yeah, life size dog. I understand that, but I'm I'm having <laughs> a problem with the phrase life size puppets because okay. uh you know, like human sized puppets I think makes more sense. Like a real life puppet could be, you know, just uh the uh, Kermit sized, right? Like that's that's a life size puppet. It's it's the size that a Kermit 
Puppet. Semantics, semantics, Jay. Semantics. All right. All right. I'm, I'm going to get off my, uh, my self box here. Uh, we've got Noah Epps. Speaking of life size puppets, uh, this is the one. And, and, I'm sorry. Uh, and if you really want to get technical about it, those are Muppets. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, yes. Okay. We, okay. we don't need to go down that rabbit hole right now. <laughs> uh, Noah Epps, he did the like marionette act, uh, a lot of popping and locking. Uh, 11 year old dancer. We had Resound. This is a trio that I am pretty high on. I think they uh, can go far. And then finally, um, the last one listed here that we told made it through to the quarterfinals is Thomas Day. They did not mention him as one of the acts performing next week, but uh, process of elimination says that he might in fact be performing. So we're going to see who takes that spot. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting. Still kind of a lot of unknowns. Uh, they're not advertising these changes very well. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting what we see over the next, uh, the next week. The AGT wiki says Thomas Day automatically advanced to the quarterfinals without performing. So, you're right. so he did not perform in Judge Cuts. Well, he just wasn't called back to Judge. Like, they only... Yeah, they, they put a group okay. of them through and they called 10 back and they said five of you 10 are going to go through and five of you 10 are going to be eliminated. Okay. So he was, you know, part of the top 45 or, you know, whatever yeah. that they wanted to, to put through. So, okay. all right, Thomas Day, uh, we may or may not see him. He may or may not kick a field goal. Um, you know, the world is his oyster. He can, he can do what he wants with it. So, uh, yeah, you uh, may have a foot, you may be playing football games right now. Uh, yeah possibly yeah. um we'll see we'll see what happens so that is uh that's what we got we've got um one more week of quarterfinals and then semis and uh i guess it's worth updating points on our uh on our draft uh you gained another three points this week with christina ray malik dope and max major I gained another two points with uh, Alan Silva and Waffle Crew. Um, next week, uh, well, I guess that leaves our totals at uh, nine to six. You've gotten three through every week to my two every week. <laughs> uh, and then going into the final week, you've got, of the 11 acts, uh, seven? Seven, yes. And I've got four. Yes, but I feel your four are stronger than my seven. I, I feel the same. And I would really love to see like all four of mine go through. And that would bump my numbers from six up to 10 and leave only one more spot for you. And your nine would go to 10. And we are neck and neck going into, yes. uh, into the semis. I, I also have uh, two acts that are iffy next week. One that we don't know if they're performing <laughs> and another one that may have a replacement. So a right. uh, lot of questions on my draft board for next week. Yeah. So, you know, when I was putting together the draft, I, I just kind of went through and I ranked all the acts, you know, A, B, C, D, um, just to kind of get them chunked out so that I could, you know, start to figure out where I'm going to draft these different, different groups, different acts. And uh, of your seven, I've got two D's and five C's <laughs> and I've for, for mine, I've got two A's and two B's. So I'm, I'm feeling optimistic. Uh, Lightwave theater company uh, is, is the one that I feel the most um, on the fence about yes. going through. Like they, yeah. they could be knocked out, but yeah. Um, you know, it, I'd, I'd sure rather be in a spot where I could get five points instead of only four max but <laughs> is what it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's uh, it's a it's a good episode, Jay. Yes, we have uh, <laughs> we've walked around the park with this one. I think um, uh, if you, uh, of course, uh, listeners have anything to uh, say that you want to interact with us at AGT Time, I'm at One Man Bander or Cody L Patterson is at Cody L Patterson. Uh, Facebook, email, agtcast, agtcast at gmail.com. And if you're interested, like I said, with 
uh, you know, sharing a few dollars with us, agtcast at gmail.com would be the way to do that through PayPal. And, uh, man. Rate, rate, review. Oh, we didn't check our reviews this week, Jay. Oh, man. Yeah. Rate, yeah. review, subscribe. They say that that's really important. Uh, at least every podcast that I listen to says it is. Um, and, uh, yeah, like this is, like we said earlier, it's a hobby for us. It's fun for us. Uh, every little bit that you guys do to um, uh, interact with us, you know, keep our downloads up. That's that's fun for us. Um, we don't make a dollar. We have no sponsors. We're not interested in uh, making this much more than just a a hobby for us. But if you can help us defray the cost, um, we it's appreciated. Uh, no, no new reviews this week, Jay. So, uh, we'd love for you to leave a review. We'd give you the golden buzzer. If you leave us a five-star review, we'd love to hear from you. It'd be great. All right. With that, Cody, I'll ask everybody to, uh, stay safe again out there. Uh, wash your hands and, uh, we appreciate you listening. Have a great night. Bye.